What's in a name? This question arises because of Tata's albatross. It derives its name from a legendary bird, the albatross. Legendary. Now that is a big goal for a big hatch going into the premium segment up against rivals like Maruti Suzuki's Baleno and Hyundai's i20. Good thing then that Tata's brand spanking new Alpha Arc platform makes up the bones of it. Before the bones, let's talk about how it is in the flesh. Like the sunrise, the Altros shimmers mesmerizingly in the signature golden shade. There are plenty of black accents, and the tip forward stance gives it a hint of wickedness. You look at those halogen headlamps, they seem to be glaring at you. A bit hawkish if you ask me. But like the Albatross, the Altros also has very prominent dark eyebrows. And the Albatross is also known for its large wingspan, almost 11 feet. The Altros obviously isn't that wide, but it is the widest in the segment now. 10 millimeters more than its closest rival, the Baleno. The creased hood makes it look even more intent. Like on a bird that's diving for its prey, raging winds seem to have sculpted the lines on the Altros. Take the tail for instance. The lamps, beautifully detailed, sharply cut, and the tailgate itself is heavily layered, forming one tightly packed and streamlined shape. You look down the side, the sash that runs under the window line makes the Altros seem like it's moving fast even when it's standing still. And the winds seem to have blown the rear door handle up here. Interesting, but the mechanism could have been better so that you could just open it in one clean move. And that aside, you notice that the indicator for the side is also positioned a bit differently. Criticisms? We have a few. For instance, a shark fin antenna would have looked spot on, right? And wow elements? Yes, there is a LED DRL, but LED elements maybe in the tail lamps would have upped the premiumness quotient on the Altros. But onto more serious things. Well, all those black elements finished in piano black, in our dusty conditions, that's going to take some TLC in terms of upkeep. And in terms of proportions, because of that really prominent brow, it just seems like it's a little bit nose heavy. And its proportions are a bit different. If a wandering albatross were to unfurl its wings here, then the albatross would still be longer by about two feet. Because like its rivals, this is also a sub 4 meter hatchback. But interestingly, its wheelbase at 2501mm is smaller than all of its rivals, except for the Volkswagen Polo. The Albatross, it likes company, nesting in large colonies. The Altros, it's welcoming right from the get-go too. Take a look at these doors, which open up 90 degrees which will make it easier for older occupants to get in and out. That's part of the charm of the Alpha Arc platform, right? And there is a sense of solidity and sophistication in the way these doors open and close. Listen to this. It certainly isn't short on practicality because you can see inside the cabin, there's lots of storage spaces, like this humongous cooled glove box storage area here, then you've got cup holders on the center console as well. The door pockets are handy, as is the storage for a small umbrella. So it is very practical. And along with that, it also feels welcoming in terms of the design. If you look at this dished out shape, this might look very plain to you, but when it gets dark, you can see the ambient light play with that and it starts to make sense. In terms of the materials on offer, you'll find that it is just hard plastics on use, different textures in use, but it seems fairly modern. This lower half, though the texture for it, is something that feels a little out of place here. Somehow, the dashboard design and layout doesn't seem to wow you. If you're talking about the experience for the driver, this well-finished flat bottom steering wheel feels great to hold. The materials on use, the slightly rubberized texture for the boss just looks and feels great. You've got switches here for your infotainment system, which of course you use 
for the infotainment and for the MID, which is a seven inch unit. And it works along with the touchscreen system to give you details in terms of the music you're playing or navigation instructions. If you have your Android Auto, or Apple CarPlay enabled phone attached to it. And the touchscreen, well, it's a seven inch unit. It's a HD display. And the good thing is it looks crisp and it works seamlessly. There is no lagginess in this. So it is a big step up from other experiences on Tata products. The infotainment system is paired with the JBL Harman audio system. That aside, it gets all the kit you'd expect from a car in this class, like rain sensing wipers, automatic headlamps. It also packs in some handy voice commands. Set temperature to 24 degrees. Setting temperature to 24. It also packs automatic air conditioning, cruise control, a sliding armrest, height adjustable seat belts, and a rear washer and wiper on this top-end XZ variant. In terms of safety, dual airbags and ABS is standard. Interestingly, Tata Motors will offer four different packs to add features to lower variants. Like, for better infotainment and audio, you have the rhythm pack on the XC and XM variants. For better aesthetics, you have the style pack on the XM and the Lux and Urban Packs for the XT and XZ variants. The Altros, it surprises here as well. Firstly, I expected the window line to make this feel a little cooped in, but it doesn't because it stretches a fair way back. Then, if you want to seat three adults in the back, you can do that with a great amount of comfort because the cabin is wide, the floor is pretty flat as well. The only thing is the headrest for the middle passenger, it's missing. Then we come to the things that could have been better. For instance, the seat base could have been a bit longer, there could have been better under thigh support. So taller occupants would find that a little bit lacking. And that aside, if you look at the aircon vents here, they look a little plasticky and the range of adjustment is limited as well. If we talk about knee room, it's got more than the Elite i20 and less than the Baleno, which is admirable. Coming to the boot space, you've got 345 liters of storage. Well, that is nine liters less than the Jazz, but that's still a lot. And the good thing is that the boot is shaped so well that you will be able to pack in larger pieces of luggage here as well. The only thing is that seat is not 60-40 split. So if you have larger pieces of luggage, you're gonna have to fold it all the way down. Did you know the Albatross can fly 16,000 kilometers without landing? Gotta need a strong heart for that, huh? The Altros has a choice of two engine options, a diesel and a petrol. The petrol is the 1.2 litre naturally aspirated engine we've seen in the Tigo, but it's been thoroughly reworked to meet BS6 norms and improve refinement, for which it gets things like an integrated exhaust manifold, it gets variable valve timing for the intake and exhaust, and delivers about 83 PS of power and comes made into a 5-speed gearbox. This engine impresses with its low speed tractability. It can sit at low speeds in high gears. Fourth gear, 30 kilometers an hour, not an issue. Put the foot down and it will get going smoothly. The thing is, it feels and sounds a bit clattery. It is a three cylinder engine, so it misses out on that sense of refinement. And for really making a move on, let's say at higher speeds on the highway, you would have to shift down a gear or two to really get going. Which wouldn't be half as bad if the gear shifts were just smoother. Right now, they feel a little vague and clunky. Now, the diesel is the one that feels a lot more responsive to drive. This is the one and a half liter diesel engine from the next one, but it's been detuned to 90 horsepower because, well, this is also lighter. It also uses a five speed gearbox instead of a six speed unit on the next one. Turbo lag is well managed on the diesel, so you can drive at low speeds. The clutch is light, so gear changes are not an issue at all. And you can drive at higher speeds with a good amount of responsiveness. For instance, sitting in fifth gear at 80 kilometers an hour, just tap the throttle and you can feel the surge of torque kicking in 
right away. One thing with the diesel is even when you have a constant throttle, you can feel the power trailing or rising, which makes it feel a little unsettling at times. Now, both these engines come with eco and city modes. The city modes are the more responsive modes and the eco mode basically dulls the throttle so as to get better efficiency. And talking about efficiency, did you know the Albatross can fly for hundreds of kilometers without even flapping its wings? In the urban environment, that would be like driving hundreds of kilometers without making gear changes. And yes, not having an automatic on offer right now on the Albatross is a bit jarring, right? Interestingly, we know that an AMT is not in consideration for the Altros. Do you think it will be a CVT or a DCT? We know the answer. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. If you are wondering about fuel efficiency, Tata Motors hasn't shared any figures yet. But interestingly, the petrol version gets an idle start-stop. Does it glide as gracefully as the Albatross? Now this is where the Alpha Arc platform absolutely shines. The wide footprint, the low stance, drop the center of gravity on this hatchback that weighs over one tons. And it gives it a clear character, absolutely unflappable. At low speeds, it will just silently move its way over broken roads. Also, the 165mm of ground clearance feels adequate for a car of this class. Higher speeds, it just feels so composed and calm. This is a car that will make you feel at ease when you drive it. And that's also down to the view that you get, which is really nice and wide. Given the overall shape of the Altros, you do end up sitting in a slightly lower seating position which means you could get a nice racy driving position. But for that, the steering would need rake and reach adjustment to push back far enough so that your legs can stretch out. Right now, you sit forward and you end up missing out on under thigh support. A lot of you are thinking of this as a racy hot hatch. Well, I wouldn't call it that because it would need a little bit more feedback from the steering and it would need to be a little bit more nippy to hit that nail on the head. Legendary, has the Altros hit the mark? Well, in terms of its heart, it would have to do a little bit better. The petrol engine is great for commuting, but it doesn't quite cut it in terms of refinement and peppiness when you think about it as a petrol. The three-cylinder configuration does make it a little bit clattery. The diesel feels smoother, peppier and just more versatile but it could do with a bit more finesse in terms of its power delivery and the vibrations that you feel inside the cabin. The gearboxes also could be smoother. In terms of cabin experience the Altros will fit into the premium hatchback segment just fine but this is an all-new era for Tata Motors an all-new product made on a clean slate. We were expecting it to set benchmarks on this front. However, with the Alpha Arc platform, the Altros is setting new benchmarks in terms of the way it rides and drives, which feels comfortable, confident, and is clearly giving you a big car feel. And that is something you also get on the inside. It feels like a great balance between spaciousness and, well, looking like this on the outside. The Altros looks like nothing else on the road right now. So, has the Altros got the legendary status for you? Let us know in the comments below. We'll wait for its launch in January 2020 to make up our minds.